On our channel, we already reviewed truly unique home-built projects. And while some offer practicality and versatility, others will get all the eyes on you when you land on the airfield. From Rutan's canards to Van's RVs, every pilot can find the bird that fits just his needs. But what if your sole dream is the ultimate speed? Speed that's unmatched by anything in general aviation. What if you want to go faster than any Cessna, Piper, Diamond, or even Lancer and Mooney? Well, I've got a solution for you. All you need to do is build yourself a fighter jet. But how? Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we review the most ambitious home-built project, the Viper Jet. This story begins in the late 80s. Scott and Dan Hatchett embarked on quite a challenging project. See, since the late 70s, kit-built experimental aircraft were probably the cheapest way to get to the skies, and designers were pushing the limits of endurance, comfort, and versatility but practically none of them pushed the performance as much as the Anchet brothers aimed to. And what's the pinnacle of performance in the skies? Right, fighter jets. So Scott and Dan quickly sketched the design. To me, it resembled something in between of F-5 Tiger and T-38 Talon, but the brothers realized that a full composite, jet-powered, home-built fighter project might be just a bit too ambitious. So, their initial plan was to have a turbocharged piston engine in a pusher config. And while this design appeared a bit more realistic for the first years since the idea sparked in their heads, they were just going back and forth, refining the design. Until in 1995, the brothers visited AirVenture in Oshkosh and met one of the key figures in Viper Jet success, Mark Betozzini. Little did they know that Mark was a good old friend of Dave Fawcett, CEO of Airbus Aviation Corporation a company that specializes in the design, engineering, and prototyping of everything that can fly. Immediately, the tandem was formed, ambitious youngsters and industry veterans. Mark refined the sketches provided by Scott and Dan and sent them to Composites Unlimited, a company that would manufacture the fuselage parts. Well, as for the fuselage, all seemed to work well, but when they put a heavy Continental 520 in a pusher configuration, something wasn't right. I haven't found exact information about this, but supposedly the problem laid in the carbon fiber drive shaft that would connect to the prop and engine, and resulted in heavy vibrations that made it extremely risky to fly this thing. Well, the solution for eliminating combustion engine vibrations is that simple. Don't use a combustion engine, right? That's what Scott thought, and called his friend who had imported a few French jet trainers, Foga SM-170. Scott asked if it would be possible to get an engine from one of the 170s, French Turbomeca Marbor. He received a positive answer, and just a week later, brothers were busy fitting the jet from a real military jet trainer to a composite home-built fuselage. And you know what? They did it! Viperfan was quickly renamed to Viperjet and made its maiden flight in 1999, piloted by ex-Navy Len Fox. The feedback was positive. Agility, stability, and overall feel impressed even such a seasoned pilot as Len. But if the fuselage design was reviewed multiple times, the choice of the jet wasn't. And that's another pivotal moment in the story of Viper Jet. After testing various jet engines, brothers found the J85. Yup, that's the engine used in F5 and T38. Big, powerful jet delivering a freaking 3,000 pounds of thrust. Just to mention, the Turbo Mecha was capable of 700, and it was smaller and less thirsty. Such a drastic change led to basically a full redesign. And you guessed it, they did it again. Wings, flaps, tail, gear, all of that was redesigned in order to comply with more than triple the power. Good thing to everyone who purchased the first version of Viperjet, they've sent redesigned parts at no extra cost. So, the year is 2005, and this beautiful and powerful Viperjet MK2 is ready to take off. Let's take a closer look. The bird comes at 25.5 feet long with a wingspan of 27.8 feet and a total wing area of 120 square feet. MK2 fuselage is almost all reinforced composites. To be precise, it's an oven-cured, under-vacuumed carbon fiber with a half-inch honeycomb core. This makes the fuselage really lightweight, but a hefty J85 adds up and Viperjet weighs in at 2,500 pounds empty. 
Speaking of J85, as I already told you, it's the same engine used in Northrop F5 and T38, just a different variant, 17A, without an afterburner. But even without it, it burns almost 250 gallons per hour at full throttle. Just to put it more dramatically, it's equivalent to a fleet of 25 Cessna Skyhawks. Scott Hanchett said that the cost of operation is $400 per hour, but that was back in 2005. I guess the price for jet fuel went up quite a bit. Nevertheless, J85 is capable of pushing this bird to 457 knots or 525 miles per hour at flight level 250. While at 70% power, your cruise will still be impressive, around 400 knots. Now, for the climb, those are the numbers we haven't ever seen on our channel. A whopping 10,000 feet per minute. Those are some serious numbers, considering it does that with 300 gallons of fuel, two pilots, and 100 pounds of luggage on board. As for the range, yeah, jet engines chug fuel like crazy. So you end up with just 1,000 miles, but that will probably be your fastest 1,000 traveled so far. Well, if you haven't quit this video at the 400 per hour moment, I guess you would like to know how much you would need to spend to build this beast. Now, this gets tricky. In short, you can't. Unfortunately, Viper aircraft is unreachable, and the last news stated that in 2009, they suspended kit production of the Viper jet and were working on Viper Fan, essentially a reworked plane with a turbofan engine. But back in the day, you would spend 183,000 on the base kit, then 100 grand for the engine and 70 for avionics, IFR certified. Add 80 grand for the builder assist program, and if you really want to max it out, 40 for the pressurized cabin ends up at $473,000. As of now, there is just one on tradeaplane.com that was somehow built in 2020, and the price is disclosed. As we wrap up this video, I just want to say that this is definitely sad that such an amazing bird didn't find much success. But let's be honest, the home-built market hasn't really changed since the late 70s. It's still much more focused on more affordable and reliable planes rather than the ones which are equipped with a fighter jet engine. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm always glad to hear your stories and opinions. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.